This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Simplify your online life with a free account from Dashlane. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. The habitable zone, or the region of space within a star's orbit that strikes that critical balance, is often called the Goldilocks zone for just that reason. We know that Earth resides within the Sun's habitable zone, otherwise we wouldn't be here wasting time on YouTube. But what is it exactly that makes a planet habitable? Is it simply being the right distance from the parent star, or are there other factors that play a role in determining where life might arise? A new study, titled Habitable Zone Predictions and How to Test Them, hopes to foster a more comprehensive approach in cataloging exoplanets and trying to figure out where we're most likely to find life in the universe. While we still have a lot to figure out regarding where life is likely to arise, we do have some ideas that can help guide the search. As of right now, exoplanets are designated as potentially habitable if they orbit within their star's habitable zone, meaning they're not so far away as to risk freezing, nor are they too close to risk burning up. The problem with determining habitability is that we make a lot of assumptions in the process. We assume that there have to be large bodies of liquid water on the surface of the planet. We assume that the planet has to be rocky, that it has tectonic activity, and that it has an atmosphere containing oxygen. It's no mystery why we make these assumptions, it's what we see on Earth. And each of those assumptions is based on the fact that we humans rely on these characteristics to survive. But the things that work here on Earth may not work on exoplanets throughout the universe. For example, there is some evidence to indicate that atmospheric oxygen does not automatically guarantee life, and other data seems to show that the presence of oxygen early in a planet's formation could actually prevent the genesis of basic life. Then there have been other studies suggesting that plate tectonics are not necessary, or that water worlds may not support life after all. So really, we have evidence for and against all of our assumptions. To make a long story short, in order to more accurately assess the habitability of far-off worlds, we'll need to rely heavily on the next-gen space telescopes slated for launch in the coming decade. They'll be able to help us get a better look at atmospheric conditions on planets many light-years away, and refine our understanding of the origins of life. But in the meantime, based on our current understanding, where should we look for evidence of life beyond Earth? For starters, it's likely that small stars, like red dwarfs, are not bright or warm enough to support the development of life, and that it might be uncommon that planets orbiting a red dwarf would have a stable atmosphere. These are still hotly debated points, but at least we can narrow down our search by eliminating smaller, cooler stars from the running. Then we have larger, hotter, so-called Type A stars. These include Sirius A, Altair, and Vega. Studies suggest that this type of star is too hot to allow for habitable planets. If we cross type A stars off the list of candidates, that leaves, unsurprisingly, sun-like stars. If we limit our search to stars similar to our own, in theory we should be on the right track to find at least simple life forms beyond Earth. But the star is only part of the equation. We also need a planet with the right mix of characteristics. As of right now, there are two distinct types of planet that have promise. The first is rocky planets, like Earth or Mars, with large bodies of liquid water. The second is water worlds, or planets that are entirely or almost entirely covered with water. If Earth is any indication, anywhere there's water, there's life. So it would make sense that we would find some form of life on planets orbiting sun-like stars within their habitable zone with plenty of surface water. However, there's a big problem with water worlds. Any planet with around 50% water by mass would likely have a thick layer of ice at its core mantle boundary, which would likely prevent hydrothermal activity. The heating of oceans by subsurface vents or other hydrothermal activity is crucial to an environment that could support life. This activity is what makes Jupiter's moon Europa so enticing a subject for study. It has massive subsurface oceans that are heated by geothermal vents, which also provide essential compounds for life. Since Europa is fairly close by in cosmic terms, it would make a prime first study for the viability of water worlds. If we were to find life on Europa, it would all but guarantee success on other, similar watery planets. In the meantime, based on our current understanding of biological processes and their connection to planet formation, the best places to look for life as we know it are rocky planets with sun-like stars. Of course, if we expand our imagination to include forms of life that are very different from what we see on Earth, places like Saturn's moon Titan could be quite promising. Titan is home to an environment that is almost perfect for the development of exotic life. It's rich in prebiotic conditions and organic chemistry. The only difference is instead of liquid water, Titan has lakes of liquid methane. The question is, is it water that leads to the development of life, or is it simply the presence of a liquid solvent to serve as a breeding ground for simple compounds? To answer that question, we'll need to launch a mission to Titan. If we found life there, it would shatter the preconceptions we have about the necessary conditions for life, and we'd need to completely reevaluate our targets for study. But until then, we're stuck mostly guessing at where we might find extraterrestrial life forms. 
In this humble YouTuber's opinion, we should send missions to both Europa and Titan, and probably Enceladus for good measure. We have promising locations in our own neighborhood, and it would be a waste not to study them more fully. We should absolutely use the upcoming next-gen space telescopes to have a closer look at super-distant exoplanets. But when it comes to space, closer is much easier. The science of habitability is challenging, but not everything has to be. You can make your online life much easier with a free account from Dashlane. Dashlane is a mobile and desktop app that gives you a shortcut for everything you do online. Log in instantly, fly through forms, and breeze through checkouts on every device you own. Dashlane is different than other options for automatic logins. Whereas solutions like Keychain and Chrome lock you into a single system and sign-on solutions like Facebook misuse your data, Dashlane operates across platforms, and they never have access to your personal data, so your information is always 100% secure. Dashlane is the internet's best life hack. It makes what you're already doing better, faster, safer, and more efficient. You can autofill login fields, fill out information forms with a single click, easily share passwords with friends and family, and the built-in VPN lets you access the content you want when you want it. But don't just take my word for it, Dashlane is trusted by over 11 million users in 180 countries. It's recommended by both Apple and Google, and it's one of the top-rated apps on iOS. Give Dashlane a shot by creating a free account at dashlane.com slash second thought, and get a free 30-day trial of Dashlane Premium when you follow the link below. If you like it, great! Otherwise, you can always use your free Dashlane account with no ads ever. It's a great service, and I can't recommend it highly enough. Get your free account by visiting dashlane.com slash second thought. If you enjoyed this episode, consider dropping a like. If not, a thumbs down. While you're here, check out some of my other work. I have videos on all sorts of topics, and I bet you'll find something you'll enjoy. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more episodes like this one, and click the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.